scripture. First John chapter five, everybody there. Now that's why I say don't listen. If you ain't got a Bible with you, look over, elbow somebody and say, Hey, I want to read with you. All right. First John chapter five, whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is what? Born of God. Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be born again. And everyone that loveth him that begat, in other words, if you love the Lord that begat you, your heavenly father, everyone that loveth him that begat, loveth him also that is begotten. He said, if you love God, you love the one that begotten, you'll love the, the, the brethren that are begotten. In other words, you're going to love, you're going to love your brethren. Verse two, by this, there it is, uh, sister, uh, Mitchell, we know by the, I appreciated your testimony, but did you ever get rid of that beer can behind your chair? Yeah. You still there? <laughs> Amen. All right. So he said, by this we know that we love the children of God and we love God and keep his commandments. Hmm. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. Now, let me tell you what God's telling you there. God is telling you when you get genuinely born again, the spirit of God, that it's not going to be a pain in the neck to want to obey God. You may not do it every time, right? But you, it ain't going to be, oh, no, I've got to quit stealing. I'm saved now. Oh no, I can't commit adultery no more. I'm a Christian. No, that, oh no, I've got to have a, you know, that's not, you're going to want to. You may not always be what you think you, Paul said, that that I would not, I do. That that I do, would not, that that I do, I would not. And I mean, he just said it's a fight. Amen. But he had that desire. And God's saying that if you're saved, one of the evidence is going to be that uh, you're going to want to keep God's you, you hear something preached and it's out of the Bible. There's going to be something inside you said, well, honey, let's try to do that. Amen. Well, anyway, verse number four says, whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. Now, if you, whatsoever born of God, he's talking about salvation there. Jesus said, you must be born again of the spirit of God. He said, now, whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. Now, here's something I want to give you. You don't overcome the world. It's Christ in you. Okay. It's Christ in you. And being saved is how you overcome the world. By the way, if you want to read it in the first, in chapters two and chapters three of the book Revelation, every church is written, he talks about to him that overcometh. And it'll tell you what he's going to give you or what he's going to do for you. Okay. Well, if somebody says, Reggie, what's an overcomer? An overcomer is one who's been born again in the spirit of God. An overcomer is not somebody sitting in this church who's more spiritual than somebody else. No, that's not true. An overcomer is one who's been born of God. It tells you right there, whosoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. The just shall live by faith. The whole Reformation movement was started on that phrase out of the Bible. The just shall live by faith. Faith comes by here and here comes the word of God. Now he says in verse 5, who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the son of God. Verse number six, this is he that came by water and blood. Remember when they put that spear in Jesus' side? Water and blood came out of his side. The old song tells it uh, the best. It talks about uh, the water and the blood. The water, the, the blood, the blood is the redemption from the wrath of God. And the water speaks of the cleansing life that we have. The water of the word washing over us, okay? The blood speaks of the criminal, the judicial act of God saving, and the water speaks of the cleansing power of that. Now, we get into verse number, uh, he said, he said, he said, even Jesus Christ, verse number six, not by water only, but by water and blood, and it is the spirit that beareth witness because the spirit is truth. Now, here's what happened. When you get saved, the spirit of the living God dwells within your body. Born of the Spirit of God, and the new man is born of the Spirit of God, and the Spirit of God, he said, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he's none of his. And now, that's, there is a witness of the Spirit in your life. Now, what you heard this morning, these testimonies was, you heard people talking, at, and some of them weren't even realizing, I think, that they were saying it, but if you were picking it up, they were telling you that the Spirit of God was witnessing in their hearts to the fact that they were saved. And can I tell you something? The Spirit of God will witness to your heart. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Now you say, Reggie, how is he going to bear witness in my heart that he's saved? He's going to do it through this book. Now you may have good feelings, and good feelings are wonderful. And I'll tell you, I'm like the old preacher said, if anything as big as sin moves out and anything big as God moves in, you're going to feel something. Amen. 
But there's going to be days when you don't feel very good and you haven't done very good and you're going to need something beyond feelings to carry you through. And it's telling you right here, he's telling you right here that it's faith. Now he said, verse number seven, now watch this witness business. He said, there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. And if your Bible don't have that in it, you do not have a Bible. Okay, now that verse is very one of the most important verses in the entire Word of God. The three bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. And there are three that bear witness. See this witness, this record business in the earth, the Spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three agree in one. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. See, God knows you need something more than the preacher told you were saved. You need something more than mama said you're all right. You need to know that God has said in your heart, I have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? He said the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he hath testified of his son. Now watch what God's are doing here. God's telling you, I want to give you assurance. I'm going to give you a record. I'm going to give you a witness about your salvation. Now here it is in verse number 10. Watch this carefully. He that believeth on the son of God hath the witness in himself. That's the spirit of God bearing witness within you. You see, when you get saved, God moves in. God moves in. Hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar because he believeth not the record that God gave of his son. Now, here's very critical. God the Father takes it very seriously when you deny the record of the son because redemption is based in what the son did, the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ lived the sinless life. Jesus Christ was born of a virgin, lived a sinless life. Jesus Christ was the Lamb of God that was sacrificed on the cross of Calvary to die in your place and in my place. Jesus Christ died in our place for our sins, took the wrath of God and took his, our sins upon him on that tree, with, died and was buried and rose again from the dead. And God says, if you believe on that, the gospel of Jesus Christ, receive him as your savior, God will save you. Now he said, I'm going to give you a record about this. And we'll get to this in just a second. Here we go. Verse number 11. And this is the record. Now, how would you feel this morning if somebody said, Reggie, uh, who's your wife in here? I've heard you talk about Karen. Let's say there was a visitor here and they said, who's your wife? I hear you talking about Karen. I don't know. Just take a guess. She's out there somewhere. And if, what if I say, well, I'm not sure. You'd say, there's a, there's a ranking idiot right there in front of me. And so while you, and I'd say, well, over there she is. And, 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 and they said, well, are you married to her? And I, well, I hope I am. 40 years. But if I said, I hope I am, what would you think? That guy doesn't understand marriage, right? What if I said, well, I, I think I am. You know what you'd say? He doesn't understand marriage. He's got a real problem. Now, it might not mean that I wasn't married to her, but I just don't understand it right. Now, what you'd expect me to say is, if Reggie, is that your wife, Karen, your wife? You expect me to say, yes, sir, howdy doody, glory to God, amen, yes, sir. And you'd say by that, boy, he's sure about that, ain't he? Not only is he sure about it, he's glad about it. You see, that's what, that's what's going on. So anyway, uh, but you could go and you say, well, Reggie, some days, do you feel married every day? Yeah. No, I, <laughs> no, I mean, you know what? Marriage is not about feeling. There's days when I don't feel good. There's been times when I've vomited in the tub of the bathroom. <laughs> I'm so sick. I don't feel married today. But I'm still married, right? There's been days me and Karen got in the fight, got in the fuss. Was I still married, Kenny? Yeah. There's been times when I was not right toward her and didn't do her right. Was I still married? You see, that's why Christ is, he's the bridegroom, we're the bride. If you don't ever, if you don't understand this in the Bible, you're never going to get happy in Jesus. Now watch what God said. Now, but there's something else. Isn't it funny that I could go over to Hartville and I could say, county clerk, and they say, how can we help you, Reggie? And I say, I'm over here to check to see if me and Karen's married. And he'd look at me and say, you have a problem. But I'm going to help you with your problem. And he'd turn and go over to the file cabinets in the county recorder's office. And he'd go through there and get down to the caves and he'd pull it out. And he said, Reggie, right here's the living proof. Uh, June the 25th, 1977, Brethren Church in Mountain Grove. And it said, there's witnesses signed it. Do you remember reading about witnesses in here? Here's a record and here's a record of the witnesses. Are you listening to me? Some of you need to find out whether you're saved or not. And, if, and some of you need to are saved. You need to find out whether you're saved and know it. Amen. Anyway, look at verse number 11. This is the record that God hath given. Now, if something's given to you, can you purchase it? 
If it's given to you, do you merit it? If it's given to you, did you earn it? Not if it's a gift. For by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourselves is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. He said, this is the record that God hath given to us. What? What your Bible say? Eternal life. life. Now, I want you to define eternal for me. How long is eternal? Never ends. If it ever ended, it wasn't eternal. He gave you a specific kind of life. He gave you his life. That's why you have to understand. You have to go back to Genesis in the beginning. You see, God doesn't tell you where he started. He didn't start. Did you know what your Bible tells you? He's eternally existed from everlasting to everlasting. He's God. You say that blows my mind. That's why I've told you for years, you don't need drugs to blow your mind. Read your Bible. It'll blow your mind. Amen. Amen. Now you listen to me. <clears throat> he gives, when a man gets saved, when a man gets born again in the spirit of God, God gives him eternal life. Now that's your Bible. People, it's John 3, 16, it's John 3, 36, it's John 10. I mean, it goes on, it goes on, and it goes on. Ecclesiastes tells you, it, it, it tells you that in the Old Testament. So, here's what I want to tell you. you. If you're here today, and you're, you've are you been saved, but you're just struggling, now, I'm not, I can't tell you, I, I can't see inside your heart. I'm giving you a word of God, okay? This is the record that God has given to us eternal life, and this life is in how well you do each week. What's it say? Are you reading your Bibles? What's it say? This life is in where? His son. It's just like the sister said a while ago. It is not how well you're living or not how bad you're doing. It's in his son. Your salvation is in Jesus Christ. Shed blood for you. He said this life is in his son. What life is it? This eternal life is in his son. Verse number 12. Watch it. Here, here's it. Here's it. It's over with. He that hath the son hath life. Well, what kind of life is he talking about? Eternal life. He that hath the son hath life. And he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. It's all about whether you have Christ in your life as your Savior or you don't. And so everybody in this room and everybody listening to me today, you're just like me. Either you have Christ or you don't. And if you have Jesus Christ, you have eternal life. And if you don't have Jesus Christ, you don't have eternal life. It's just that simple. But the best is yet to come. Look at verse 13. Look at verse 13. These things have I written, written. Written. He put it down in paper. He put it on a record for you. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that you may hope so, wish so, maybe so, might so, know that you may know that you have eternal life. And that's present tense in any, in, in anywhere. And that's just what the Bible says. And that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. So I just hope while I'm preaching today that if you're here and you don't know that you're saved for sure, that you'll do what these brothers and sisters did back here. It'll set you free. I can remember the night that I read that and the Holy Ghost said, Reggie, you don't believe that. And that's your problem. And I remember reading it and reading it and thinking, oh, Lord, is this true? Or is it, Lord, is this true? And the Holy Ghost whispered to my soul, Reggie, it's true. I don't lie to nobody about nothing. And then you know what I wonder? I wonder why hadn't somebody been preaching on that? Why, why, if in all the years I grew up in church, 13 straight years of Bible and church attendance, I do not remember one time. And by the way, a lot more than that. I didn't get married unless 23 and I was in church just about every Sunday of my life. I do not remember hearing one message on that text the entire time I was going to church. Not one time. Isn't that pitiful? That's sad. And Sister Queen, that's all your fault, so blame her for me doing that little deal this morning. But she was talking to me. She said, Reggie, she said, you know, she said, it, it, it was here at this church I began to understand that my assurance is based on the Word of God. And I just want to encourage that. You know what? God does not want you living in torment. I'll tell you what God wants. He wants you to know whether you're saved or you're not saved. He wants you to know. And if you don't know, you need to look at that and you need to meditate on that passage of scripture while I'm preaching today. And you need to say to yourself, you know, he said, if I have the son, I have the life. And he said, if I don't have the son, I don't have life. And he said that he's written these things so that I could know that I have eternal life. And God's not playing with my soul and he's not playing mind games and he's not playing psychology and he's not being a psychiatrist. He's being God and he's telling me straight up. On and off, either I'm saved or I'm not saved. And eternal life is eternal. And you're either going to believe that or you're not. And I hope that you believe because he said, if you don't believe the record of his son, you've got problems with God. You're in trouble with God. Okay. 